we got the great uh, tier pad, I mean, pad tier list. Um, I know this other guy did it. I think his name's like Ellie Marching. Uh, check out his video because it was the inspiration for this one. Uh, we're going to start out, I guess, in order. We got the, the Evans Real Feel. This is like the drum pad ever. Um, I mean, it's all right, but there's nothing spectacular about it. There's nothing really wrong with it. Give it a solid B. Um, got the Beetle Percussion Carlos Boteo pad. I love this pad. It has a stick saving rim. You can tell the difference between a rim hit and a rim shot, which is really cool. Uh, it feels like a Vic First Slim pad with a laminate on it because that's basically what it is. But biggest downside is probably the price because it's like $90 on sale and it's like over $100 regular price. So for that, I'm going to give it a B as well, but like a higher B than the real feel. All right, next is, is that the stock pad? I don't really like the stock pad that much because it feels kind of kind of patty, if that makes any sense at all. Like, you don't really feel the wood that's underneath it, like with the slim pad. So, that's getting a C for me. Now, the slim pad is basically just the stock pad with thinner rubber. And it just feels a whole hell of a lot better. It sounds a lot better. Um, only real downside is that it doesn't have a rim. So, that's cutting it off from getting S tier. But, it's a solid A for me. All right, next we got the Innovative Percussion CP1R, the black pad that's basically just an Outlander, because it actually is an Outlander, fun fact, if you didn't know that. Um, it's pretty cool. It kind of is like the slim pad, but like without the issues, like it has a, has a rim. So I like it for that. It's kind of expensive though, it's like $60. So you could just get an Outlander for that money, because it's literally the same thing. So it gets above the slim pad, but still not an S tier. Um, all right, next we got the RP1R from Innovative Percussion. And this pad is a funny story for me because I used to meme on this thing so freaking hard because I was like, oh, it's just a Vader pad by Innovative Percussion. Like who's gonna buy that? And then I play on it and it's unironically one of the best feeling surfaces I've ever played on. This is probably my go-to pad right now. Um, it just feels really good. It's like deceptively good. Like if you think it would sound like a Vader and it's like really, really quiet, but it's like that gummy surface, but you can actually hear it. And I love it for that. So this is the first, oh, come on first S tier of the list. All right, next we got Ram Pad. Ram Pad's pretty good. They have real heads as their surface. Only thing though that's a bit annoying is that the head curves like up, so it's like almost impossible to hit shots at some times, but it's a solid product, so I'm gonna give it a C. All right, next we got the Off-World Invader. Um, this is basically the flagship practice pad. I still like the innovative pad a bit better than this one, but this is no doubt an S tier. All right, tan real feel. Why did they stop making these? These are without a doubt the best feeling pads I've ever played on in my life. I just wish they weren't so hard to come by. I found one on eBay a couple weeks ago. They were selling it for like $270. And I was still considering buying it. It's that good. Like, I know everybody loves these, but I, I gotta put it ahead of everything. It's just so good. Like, I don't even care that it doesn't have a rim. All right, next we got the ProLogix Vortex pad. This one is pretty cool, I guess. It was one of my first pads, so I'm a little bit closer to it, but it's solid. It doesn't have the greatest rebound, but I don't know. There's nothing really wrong with it. I'd say it's solid beer. It's not solid B. All right, next we got 
RCP Active Snare Pad. Uh, this was my first pad, so I like it a lot. I used it in my cover videos back in the day, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's the greatest in terms of just like pure practicing, like if you're just like trying to chop out, like it lacks a little bit of rebound, but overall it's still a pretty solid product, especially if you're like into like the performance side of drumming, like you're doing covers and stuff. So I'm gonna give it a solid B as well. All right, next is the Hand Flag U12, which is basically like RCP pad, but with an extra layer. Um, I like how this one sounds and feels a lot better than the RCP. So that alone gives it an A, but again, it's not really like a core type of pad. It's just like a performance kind of thing. So I'm gonna give it an A behind the slim pad. All right, next is the Off-World Biosphere. Um, this one is another like performance type pad. I like it a lot. It's probably the one I use the most. And it's really small. That's its only downside is that it's kind of small, but I think it sounds a lot better than the RCP and the hand flag. So for that, it's getting an A above. All right, next we got the Vic Firth Quad Pad. Now this one's kind of ironic because I said I loved how the Slim Pad sounded. And this is the same series, so you would expect me to love how this one sounds, but no, I actually cannot stand how this one sounds. It sounds like absolute crap. It's just like hitting a big piece of plywood. But I can't deny that it feels really good. So out of all the quad pads, I would probably recommend this one the most, just because it's the most affordable and it feels the best. Although with this one, you do have to buy laminates aftermarket, otherwise it's kind of useless. But Still, uh, quad pad getting the S tier. All right, next we have the Zymox quad pad. So the thing with Zymox is, well, everybody kind of knows about their reputation and their horrific customer service. I can attest to it myself because I ordered a pad in 2019, never got it. So I did buy one of the quad pads aftermarket and I'm not sure if it's defective or not because it feels horrible, but I don't know. Cause other ones I've played on felt a little bit better than this one, but still it, it just leaves a kind of sour taste in my mouth. I mean, I do use this one for covers and stuff just cause it looks good, but it does not feel really good like at all. And yeah. So I'm gonna give this one probably a B behind like, like the ProLogics. All right, next we have, oh no, this is like Kibaga drum pad or something. It's like $20 off of Amazon. For what it is, it's pretty good because it's only like $20. It's basically just the real feel, but with one side. So it's good for a pad on a budget. And that's really it. I mean, I choose pretty much everything over it, including the real feel, but if you're in a pinch, it's a good path to get. So it's getting high C. All right, next is the Zymox snare pad. So, <laughs> bless you. So this pad is, ah, this is the one that never came in. Oh, wow. Never came in for me been waiting what four years for it never gonna get it I've come to terms with that but the thing that upsets me about Zymox is that they really could have had something special as a brand they were so innovative in their ideas and the products all they had to do was just ship them to people and no matter what even if they do try to make a comeback and actually start delivering their name will just be forever tarnished and that's a shame because they really did have some cool products to offer. But for this one in particular, um, I mean, it's got this snare sound. So, I mean, that's cool, I guess. But again, if you're just trying to like hone in on your technique, make sure that every note you're getting is pretty consistent with the other. It's not really good for that because the snare sound can hide some of that. And it doesn't really feel all that great now that I really like come back and think about it. So this one's getting a D. 
All right, next is the Rudimental Drummer's Core Pad, uh, real head. It does not suffer from the same problem that the Ram Pad does with the curving of the head, so that's really good. Only problem with this one really is that it's kind of expensive. It's like almost $200, so definitely more affordable options than this one, but it feels really good. And they just recently added like a configurator so that you can customize how your pad looks, give it a different base color, different rim color, a bunch of cool stuff. So price is the only thing that's really knocking this one, but I'm gonna give it an A. All right, next we have the Sabian Quiet Tone Pad. Uh, this one is not really geared towards marching like at all. It's more of like a concert and drum set pad. So using it with beefier sticks is kind of weird. It still feels kind of good, but this was never, marching was never this pad's true purpose. So for marching application, I'm gonna give it like probably like a D. If it were for like concert or anything else, really, this is an easy S tier, but just for marching alone, it's, it's not really a viable option. All right, next we have the, the Remo tunable drum pad. Um, this one is an easy S tier. I mean, it feels absolutely amazing. It is not bouncy at all. It sounds great. It's just a great product altogether. Not to mention it's really affordable. All right, um, yeah, now this is literally the worst pad for marching application ever. It's really small, it bounces around, it sounds awful. It doesn't feel good. Only thing that is good is that it's affordable, but even still you could get like a real feel or the Amazon real feel for that money. So yeah, first F just cause it's not really a marching pad to begin with, but it's does everything the Sabian does, but worse. So yeah. All right, next we got the Movement and Drumco 4-in-1 pad. Now this pad is really, really weird because they showed up on the scene in like 2018 and everybody was like, oh, this is really cool. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get one. And then I never did. And then they just disappeared off the face of the earth in like 2021. Like, there's no trace of them. Nobody's selling these. Like. I don't understand what happened to them because from what I could gather, they were doing decently well, but they're, they're just gone now. So anyways, this pad is kind of similar to, to the uh, red innovative percussion pad in that it, how it feels, but I don't know. It doesn't, it's not as sturdy as that one. I feel like, like it gets dented kind of quick. So it's definitely a solid product overall, but I'm going to give it an A still. All right, next we got the other Movement Drumco pad. This is the one I am really upset I didn't get to buy because I like how it feels a lot, but it's basically like the Beetle pad, except no stick saving rim and not as expensive. So just the non-expensive factor gives it a big advantage, but I'm gonna put it just one above four in one pad. All right, next we got the Vader double-sided pad. I mean, it's solid. It's, I don't really know what else to say. It's rubbery because, well, it's rubber. So it's okay for what it is, but see it here. All right, next we have the other Vic Firth pad. I have no idea what this one is called. Um, I freaking hate it. It's just not fun. It's, it's a boring looking pad. It doesn't feel all that great. It doesn't sound that great. Um, yeah, low D. All right, next we have the Offworld Outlander, which is basically the CP1R, um, the OG CP1R. So everything I said about the black innovative pad pretty much applies to this pad, except it's a bit cheaper. And it's red, so that's pretty cool. So this is getting a, a high A as well. All right, next we got the Offworld Hybrid, which is basically the Offworld uh, Biosphere, except full size. So you get the snare mechanisms, you get everything. Sounds great. Feels pretty good because it's an Offworld pad. So best performance pad for sure, I would say. So this is getting an S tier for me. All right, next we got the ProLogix 
what is that, the Zonix pad. Uh, they don't, I don't think they make these anymore. I wish they did because I really like them. Um, they feel great because they're laminated. Uh, yeah, that's all it's pretty much to say about these. It's a shame they don't make them anymore though. So this one, I still feel like I like the Big Fur Quad Pad a bit better. But this, these do have rims, so that is definitely an advantage. But just personal preference, I'm going to give this one an A as well. All right, next one we got is the ProLogix Vortex Quad Pad. This one I don't like as much as the Zonix one because there's no laminates. I mean, they do say it's like they put wax on the actual heads to make scrapes and stuff a bit easier. I never really felt that though. Like, I feel like it's almost like playing with the Vic First pad with no laminates. It's like your stick catch is trying to do scrapes and stuff. So, this is a solid product. It looks good too, though. So, I'm gonna put it right next to the other Vortex pad. All right, um, we got the HQ Real Feel. Uh, definitely nowhere near as good as the Tan Real Feel, but it's a solid product. I kind of hate how the bottom side feels. It's just like, just like you're smacking a slab of wood. But, I mean, it's okay. Nothing special about it. It's getting a C for me. All right, and finally, we have a table. Um, if you have literally nothing else, it's solid for what it is. In any other application, it is absolute horse anus. I would not recommend this ever because it sounds horrific. It does not feel all that great and somebody will probably get mad at you for drumming on a table, so F tier. All right, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this is all my initial thoughts on these pads. Uh, shoot, if you have any disagreements or qualms or, I don't know, if there's a pad I left out, then, I don't know, just put it in the comments below, I guess, but that's pretty much it, so yeah. Have a, have a good day, everybody, and keep on practicing, dude.